But I know that our nation is is facing many troublous times. And I really been seeking the Lord more than I ever have. Not that I hadn't always been seeking him about it, but I don't know. I just feel an urgency in my spirit that uh, we need God to move for our country. Things are happening so quick. Behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, I'm telling you, it, it's just shocking. And the church has got to get woke up. And I said, God, I said, I am so weary with trying to wake up a sleeping church. I said, God, just send us all to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Let us raise up your church out of the highways and hedges. I said, Lord, if enough come in, just maybe this tide can be turned and God give us mercy. Because I'm telling you, church, until we wake up and get back to the first principles of the Lord, Till we get back to the old paths of God. It's going to keep going just like it is. We've been turned over. Any nation that forgets God is turned into hell. And that's exactly what's taking place. We're becoming like Sodom and Gomorrah every day. I'm telling you, the gaze is just everywhere. And they're fighting for their rights everywhere you turn. And it seems like the church has took a back step instead of taking a stand and coming out against this stuff. They have went backwards. But I'm telling you, I'm going to cry loud and spare not as long as the Lord gives me my breath. Hallelujah. Because I know that this wickedness will bring us down. It'll bring us down. It's what destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And there was nothing left from them. And he said they would never rise again, and they didn't. They're, that land still lays desolate today. I'm telling you, when God speaks something, it's going to be. I don't care how much we like it and how much we don't like it. It don't matter. All that matters is what he thinks and what he says. That's just like Babylon. He said it would never be built again when he destroyed. And there's been two that tried to rebuild it. And both of them paid with their lives. I'm telling you, you cannot go against what God says and what he has in your life. If you do, you're going to find yourself fighting up against God. Amen. And you're going to be the loser. I'm telling you because God has never lost a battle. Never. He has never lost a battle. But I'm telling you, I said, God, I said, send us to the highways and hedges. Send us in the fields, Lord. Lord, set it ablaze, Father. Lord Jesus, that our nation don't have to go completely under. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, hallelujah, if something don't take place, we are headed for destruction and, and almighty destruction from Him. And I tell you, it hurts my heart and my spirit. To know that this has taken place. But I, I said, Lord, we have cried and cried and cried for years now. Trying to wake up a dead church. Only a few, only a small remnant, like a residue, has come and awakened, Lord. And Lord, I don't know if it's enough. Father, for us to stand in the gap and bring this stuff to a halt. I said, Lord, my goodness, you said you were going to have a church. You had to raise them up out of the, the harlots and the drunkards. Uh, hallelujah, the dope addicts. Uh, God's going to have a church uh, when you know that you've been saved. Uh, when you know that you've been delivered uh, and been brought back from the brink of hell. Hallelujah. You know that God's done that for you. But many that have been raised up in the church, uh, they think that they're saved by mom and daddy. But I'm telling you uh, that you can only stand uh, for yourself. Your mom and daddy can't stand for you. Right. Hallelujah. When you come to that age of accountability and nobody knows what that age is. I believe it's different for each and every person. Mm -hmm. You know there was an eight year old king that was made king back over Jerusalem. Years and years ago, I can't pronounce his name. But the Bible said that he'd done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> and if you do a study out on that, you'll see why the Lord considered him to be evil. Him being eight years old. He only knew what he was raised in. He was raised in idolatry. And he still led the children of Israel in what? What he knew. Idolatry. But yet it displeased the Lord greatly. And he was only king for three months and ten days. 
And then the king of Babylon come and, and took him into captivity. I'm telling you, children of God, we got to wake up. We got to get back to God. Get back to the old paths and the old landmarks. If we'll do that, then God will help us. But, you know, if his people that are what? Called by his name. And if you're his child, you are called by his name. He didn't say if the sinner. He said if my people. So that means his people were walking in iniquity. But many today, you can't even get them to see that their life is filled with iniquity. They think that they're all right and that they're covered by grace. I'm telling you, my Lord's grace is not greasy. It's pure and it's holy. When you're covered by grace, then you allow him to purify your life. You allow him to set your feet upon that straight and narrow way. Hallelujah. And you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. If you're still walking in the old man traits, then you have not got what you need. Hallelujah. And it's time that we wake up. We've got to. I'm telling you, this thing is coming upon us in a hurry. we got to do something, children of God. We can't keep going like we've been going. But I tell you, God is pouring out a great revival. My goodness, I feel it every time we come in service. I feel such a great igniting in my spirit. I feel such a fire burning in my heart and my soul. Hallelujah. And it's just here and there right now. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, children of God, if we'll keep pressing on, if we'll keep going on in Jesus Christ, uh, hallelujah, and let him work that work in us and purify us and cleanse us. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't ever fall. Yes, we fall. But if a righteous man falls seven times, what did the Bible say? It said he'd get up again seven times. Uh, hallelujah. The fall is when you fall and you don't get back up. Uh, hallelujah. But I'm telling you, God is raising up a people that they are rising up in this hour and they're going forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tell you what, ain't nothing like the name of Jesus. <laughs> ain't nothing like the name of Jesus. Woo! No other name has been given on earth that we will be saved by. Only by the name of Jesus are we saved. My, 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 my. What did the Bible say? It said every knee and, and, and every shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to do it one way or the other, either on this side or on the other. And I don't care whether you're a sinner or a saint, you're going to bow. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you come up in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in that magnitude, it ain't no way you can keep standing. My goodness, you fall beneath. Hallelujah. His glory. Amen. His glory. Amen. Mighty is the glory of the Lord. And righteous is he. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to get through this service without me doing Can't help it. My heart's burning for souls. I know that there's souls perishing right now, so I'm preaching. And it could be one in our family if it wasn't for the mercies of the Lord. I know that he's kept my children and grandchildren because the devil has tried to destroy them just like he has me. But keeping them covered every day in prayer, God has been merciful to them. Amen. And I'm so thankful. Amen. And I'm telling you, the Lord will always let you know ahead of time. You might not know exactly what's going to take place unless he shows you. But you know something's either going on right now or in the near future that you need to stand in the gap for. And don't ever push those aside. You always get along and pray. And ask God to move and intervene. It's been like that off and on the last few weeks. Some of it I knew it was involving my family. And I knew some of it was involving the families of the church here. And I tell you, I, 
I'd get, I'd just cry out and pray until God released it. And I knew God moved and intervened. And later on, a few days later, I found out what it was about. But I tell you what, God is good to us. My goodness, we got to stand in the gap. We got to make up the hatch Amen. for our lost loved ones. Because I'm telling you, these demonic spirits that come out of the very pits of hell that's been reserved for this day, they're running to and fro throughout the earth, and they're taking people at will. The Bible says that they'll take you at will. Only way they can't touch you is if you're sealed with the Holy Ghost or covered by prayer. That's the reason it's so important to cover your children in prayer. So important. And your grandchildren. My goodness, Lord, don't let these spirits take them. Lord, you keep them, Father. Because I'm telling you, this is why you see young children going in and shooting up schools. Seeing that they're killing one another. They say that they hear voices. What voices are they hearing? Satanic voices. That's what they're hearing. And they're what? Fulfilling that desire of that satanic voice. Why? Because they don't have power over it. It has took them over. And some say, well, I sit on a pew all the time. Can't take me over. There's many in hell today sit on a pew every, day, every week. That's, that has woke up in hell today. Because they did not have a pure heart. They did not live righteously before the Lord. What is righteousness? Choosing to do right. That's what righteousness is. And if we love the Lord, we'll keep his commandments. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said it out of his own mouth. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Amen. He said, many say with their mouth that they love me, but in works they deny me. He said, what? They are a liar and the truth is not in them. So what am I going to do? Believe the Bible or believe people that say they love the Lord and they're living in sin? Amen. I'm going to believe the Bible. People deceive themselves. They listen to their flesh. And the flesh will deceive you. I'm telling you it will. Amen. Jeremiah says it's the most deceitful <coughs> member we have is this old fleshly heart. Amen. you got three voices speaking to you. Flesh, the devil, and God. You better get rid of the two of them and only listen to God. He said, my children know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. But see, God will deal with you and prick your heart. And tell you not to do thus and thus. But he don't make you do it. It's up to you whether you do it. If you push it off, the Bible says that you'll sear your own conscience in that area. That's the reason a lot of people don't feel as, uh, feel condemnation over the things that they choose to do when it goes against contrary to the word. It's because they've done seared themselves there. Once they were convicted of it. Once they were. That's how a, a, a gossiper, a talebearer, can sit on a pew every week, but they're just as lost as a goose. Because when they first started out gossiping and doing against the Word of God, the Holy Ghost would prick them and say, don't do that. That little still, small voice, don't do that. <laughs> but they would go ahead and do it anyway. Until now, they don't feel it's wrong. Because they have seared their conscience. But see, God has got a people today, a residue, what is a residue? It is that very little left over from a remnant. <laughs> just like in uh, anything that you prepare, you can have just a little residue left. That means it's just a very little bit that's left. Well, God's got a residue. My goodness. You know, it's a lot compared to the millions and billions that's in the world. But my goodness, it's still a residue. God has got a people that's going to stand faithful and true. He said, would he find faith here on this earth when he returned? Yes, he is. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it's 7,000, it'll be 7,000. How many souls were saved in the first go-around? Only eight souls made it out of all those people. How many is going to make it this go-around? I don't know. If you look at it right now through the Spirit, it looks like it's going to be just a few. But I tell you what, when the heavens start melting and the earth starts melting, what manner of man or woman should we be in that day? Who's able to abide in the day of the Lord? And the day of the Lord is fastly approaching upon us. 
We better be holy as he is holy. We better be clothed in his righteousness. Hallelujah. Not your own righteousness because it ain't nothing but filthy rags. But if you're clothed with his righteousness, that means you walk in his word. Does it mean that you're complete 100% in it? Perfect in it? No, but you're striving every day. If you falter and fail, what do you do? You repent and get it right with God. Hallelujah. We're all growing. We're all at different measures. But isn't it wonderful what God is bringing us to? My goodness, it just thrills my heart and it makes my heart overjoy for what God is doing in our hearts. Amen. My goodness, I tell you what, God is good to us. Amen. We look every day and see how God is touching. I can look around every day and see the hand of God and the very little minute things to the big things. Woo. And I want to always be thankful for what he does. Hallelujah. And even when he don't move, I want to be thankful as well. Amen. I want to be thankful in all things. You say, well, how in the world can I be thankful in the midst of a storm? That you're being kept. <laughs> Hallelujah. That in the midst of that storm, you ain't by yourself. That Jesus Christ is right there with you, walking through the storm with you. What is he doing? He's just like a hen. He's got his wing out, sheltering you, keeping you. Amen. Hallelujah. And what do we do? We walk by faith. Standing and believing that all is well. I don't care what it looks like to the natural eye. But in him all is well. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you Jesus. Amen. My goodness I tell you what. The Lord is powerful and mighty in all his ways. Amen. My goodness I love it. My, 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 my. I tell you what. The Lord is good. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Mama, ila boturi be ba 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 handa le kurestai. Hali ura ba 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 handa le kurete. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. My goodness, I feel God. Glory, Hallelujah. Oh, I love Him, Hallelujah. But God is going to have a righteous church. Yes, He's got one now. We're very few in number, but my goodness, He's got us nonetheless, Hallelujah. That's suffering persecution. Right now, they're just casting our name out as evil and doing us wrong. But soon, if God don't turn it around, they'll be chopping heads off in this nation. Amen. Just like they are in other nations. I believe that. But I'll tell you what, he'll be faithful with you even down to that chopping block. As your head is rolling, hallelujah, he'll keep you faithful. If you'll just believe and stand in him and know that in him all things are well. That's what I ask. I said, Lord, I don't know if you've called me to be a monitor or not. But if you have, Lord, you just keep me faithful to that end. You keep me faithful, Lord, and I know that you will because you're faithful and you're trustworthy. I can trust you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You can trust him. Amen. In all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Money is he. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 My, my, I want you to turn to Second Chronicles chapter 17. I tell you what, I, I just want the Lord to have his way in each of our lives. Money is he. Money is the Lord. Sister Kelly, there's a Bible underneath right here if you need one. What do you need one? Under here. Under here. Second Chronicles. In that right. first drawer there. Is no, over here, honey. Huh? Underneath that camera. Yeah. Yeah, right in there, somewhere, right in there. Second the Chronicles Bible. 19. Yeah, Second Chronicles chapter 7. Oh, chapter 7. Hallelujah. Verse 7 and verse 14. Tell you what, the Lord is good. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12. In the Old Testament. Yeah. Right before Ezra. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is good. As soon as everybody gets it. 
Y'all say amen. Oh, I tell you, I love him. He's so wonderful. Wonderful, 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 wonderful is the Lord. Mighty is he. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, I'm so excited. You say, well, how can you be so boo-hoo in one minute and excited the other? Because <laughs> it's just all in the world. You know, as you carry a burden, you don't have to be down and out and frowning. We carry a burden and we weep and cry over the souls of mankind and over the condition of the world. And we do weep during those times, but then the joy of the Lord is always among us, always with us. And then we're refreshed by his joy. And this some he knows that we can't bear under that all the time. We just can't. And you know, even when you're going through the hardest trials, there's times that you got a smile on your face. Because of the joy of the Lord is your strength. He's helping you. Make it through. Hallelujah. But I want to read. It says right here, verse 14, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people which are called by my name. See, he put an emphasis on that. My people, which are called by my name. We're called by the name of Jesus. We are Jesus' name people. We are Jesus' people. Hallelujah. And I believe in everything that we do, in word and deed, we need to do in the name of Jesus Christ. As baptism, anything, whatever we face and do, we all face it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And it goes on and says, shall humble themselves. So if it's saying shall humble themselves, that means some of them are not in that rock. It means some of them are going in a proudful way. Some of them are thinking they're okay when they're not. Who's deceiving them? The devil and flesh is telling them they're okay when they're not. When the Lord is telling us to wake up and repent and turn from our iniquity. Then he would hear from heaven. But as long as you're walking in iniquity, he will not hear unless it's a repentant prayer. He'll let you go in your own way to destruction if you don't wake up. The Bible says the way of a man seemeth right, but the end thereof is destruction or death. This means the same thing. And he goes on and says, and pray. There's many that pray all the time, but they ain't praying in the right spirit. <laughs> but if you humble yourself and pray, then you'll be praying in the right spirit. You have many that worship false gods. They pray five times a day. They make us look bad. <laughs> and I mean, they're faithful to it too. I don't care what they're doing, what comes may. They fit their life around that prayer time. They make God's children look pitiful. <laughs> but it is something that we serve the one to live in God. So we need to be faithful in heart and spirit to Him. We need to always set a time aside every day to pray and read our Bibles and study in a prayerful spirit. Because if you do, He'll revelate this word to you. He'll open it up to you. And if God has changed your life and brought forth a birth in you, and you don't have the Holy Ghost yet, you keep seeking for it. He'll give it to you. He said of a natural father of the earth, he would not give a stone to his child that's asking for a fish. How much more our father will give you the Holy Ghost if you ask? Now sometimes he expects us to do some cleaning up. See, if you're willing to lay some things aside, so he will give you the Holy Ghost. Everybody is not the same. Some receive the Holy Ghost as soon as they go down and repent. But some have to tarry for it. I had to tarry for it. But see, God knows every heart, don't he? Hallelujah. Then it said, and pray and seek my face. So it's more than just getting down and mummering a little prayer. When you seek something, that means you put effort into it. Is it the fervent and effectual?
said the effectual prayer in fervency of what? A righteous man availeth much. So that righteous man is putting some labor into that prayer, is he not? When you put fervency in something, you are laboring in it. When you travail, you are laboring. It comes from the very pit of the stomach. So we got to seek his face. Not only pray, but seek his face. And do what? Turn. We repent. And then we turn. When true repentance takes place, it brings forth godly sorrow. And then you turn away. You turn away from that thing that you're doing. That's displeasing the Father so much. He said, and turn from their wicked ways. Anything that is not of the righteousness of God is considered wicked to him. If it's just a little white lie, it's still wicked. And you got people that's lying to their children all the time about Easter bunnies and Santa Claus and all this stuff. It's a lie. It is a lie from the pits of hell. Amen. <laughs> That's true. Who ever heard of a bunny rabbit laying eggs? That's true. That's it. You learned that in school, didn't you, honey? Logan. Well, you learned it just from nature itself, didn't you? Hallelujah. <laughs> you know that no bunny rabbit lays an egg. Hallelujah. He has a bunny rabbit birth forth their children, just like we do. But I'm telling you that God has a people that's going to teach their children right from wrong. And that will, what did the Bible say? That all liars will what? Partake in the lake of fire. You say, well, God don't care if I say this little white lie. A lie is a lie to God. And we better Straighten up. Amen. God is required of all of us. And not only is it a lie, but it's a paganism. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells me in Revelations mm -hmm. that if I'm still partaking of the mother harlot mm -hmm. of this whore church, what is put out forth from the whore church? All these pagan rituals. All these pagan holidays. The wine cup of the fury of the Lord is almost to the brim and he's about ready to pour out. Hallelujah, his plagues upon the earth. And if you're still touching her, it's going to come down your door. Amen. You say, well, my God is a God of love. He would not do that. What did he do? He will stand with his word. What did he tell you in his word? If you're touching it, it will touch you. And he expects us to straighten up. I'm telling you, we've got to walk righteously in the Lord. When you're armoring up, when you're girding about your loins with truth, because only the truth can make you free, nothing else can. It's a lie that will deceive you and carry you forth in deception. And the Bible says that God will turn you over to it if you walk in your own ways and you'll believe a lie and be damned. And where is that spirit of lie going to come from? It'll come from him. He said he would. He said he would send a spirit of delusion. Amen. This is good teaching today. Yes, it is. Because it'll help us straighten up. <laughs> yeah, it will. I want to do what's right in the eyes of God. Amen. I'm telling you. The fear of God has been taught by the precept of man. They don't know how to fear God. If you truly fear God, you fear to do wrong. The Bible tells me a man that fears God will depart from what? Iniquity. They'll depart from sin. Why? Because they want to please the Father. It would fear them to do wrong. But there's no fear anymore. There's no fear in the church. They cuss one another out. They talk bad about one another. They try to destroy one another. God ain't pleased with all this mess. I'm telling you, he's going to have a church that will straighten up. And we got to start working what? With ourselves. The Bible tells me to examine myself. I want you to point at you say and say myself. myself. That's talking about you. That's talking about me. Amen. To examine ourselves what? Daily. Did it say every other day, every other week? No. It said 
daily to see if you're walking in the faith or not. It's said for us to get with the Lord and let Him search our heart. How many get before the Lord every day and say, Lord, search through my heart. Lord, if there's anything in there that's displeasing to you, Lord, reveal it to me so I can repent and get it under the blood. Very few. Because many think they're okay and they're not. I'm telling you, God knows whether your heart. Who is a man that knows his own heart? You don't. Only one that knows my heart is God. Only one that knows your heart is God. And the only way I can know your heart is if he reveals it to me. And many times he does. There's been many times I'll be in service and the Lord will reveal to me their thoughts. Their very thoughts. And it would be exactly how he revealed it to me. I was in a, a, a service down in Jackson preaching. In a house service. And I ministered to this young couple. And the Lord spoke to me, and I knew exactly who it was, and I knew their very thoughts. That they were saying, Sister Brenda missed it now, because it was their own daughter and, and her friend. But see, a lot of times, Mom and Daddy think they know everything, they don't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even with your own children. And I said out loud, I said, no, I haven't missed God. I said, I have not I said, God is speaking this to me, and I'm going to speak it exactly how he gives it to me. And after church, I was sitting and talking with this young man, and the one that had allowed this thought to come in their mind sat there and spoke out and said, Sister Brenda, I thought for sure you missed it. I said, I know you did. The Lord told me. She said, but I can see right now you did not miss it. Hallelujah, I'm telling you, you stand with God on everything. I was in a service in Georgia. And the Lord spoke to me that he was dealing with a young man and I was ministering to him. I said, God has pricked your heart in this service. <laughs> I said, he has, hasn't he? No. But see, a lot of people let that stuff shake them. I know when God's talking to me. I said, I know God has dealt with your heart during this service. I said, you can sit there and shake your head all you want to, but I know God has dealt with you. And I said, I'm going to pray a prayer for you, and I laid my hands on him, I prayed. I said, Lord, I said, you hold his feet over the flames of hell to wake him up. Lord, don't let him die lost. You say, well, what a prayer to pray over somebody. I'd rather pray something like that than to see him lost. Come to find out. And I told the people too. I said, he can't help what he's been raised in. See, people don't understand when God is moving. And his wife told me later that he was raised in witchcraft. That's all he knew. But see, yet God was having mercy upon his soul and was dealing with him. But yet he was afraid to admit it. See, you can't let things like that shake you. You've got to know God's voice and when he's talking to you. Hallelujah. I'll always stand with what God tells me to do. Always. I don't care whether people believe I should be doing something or not. As long as I'm walking by this word. I will do what he tells me to do, whether people want to accept it or not. Because I answer to him and him alone. I want to stand before him and make it. I want to hear those words. Well done, my true and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear on Judgment Day. Because I'm telling you, when you stand before him on Judgment Day, there's no more redoing. You can't come back and redo things and say, God, just let me go back and do different, please. The rich man in hell cried out to Father Abraham, Abraham, just put a drop of water on my tongue. Take me out of this torment and suffering. 
Abraham said, no, I can't. There's a great divide between me and thee. Abraham couldn't even give him a drop of water. He said, well, if you can, just send somebody back to warn them of this place. He said, I can't. He said, they would not even hear. There's been one already raised from the grave, and that's Jesus Christ. He went into the very pits of hell and had revival in those three days he was in the grave. Hallelujah. Boy, I tell you what. Powerful is our God. Don't you know that when he entered the gates of hell, the devil was over in a corner of shaking. And all the demonic spirits was probably wondering what in the world was coming at him. I know that his feet thundered through hell as he walked there. It probably vibrated all of hell as he took one step after the other. Just like that. Hallelujah. And the devil was over in a corner shaking because he knew that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was coming for the keys of, hallelujah, of the gates of hell and death. And he knew there was nothing he could do about it. And there was many souls that he brought out that day. <laughs> hallelujah. You say, well, how come he didn't bring them all out? See, God knows the heart. There was many that perished back in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. That didn't know about Jesus and his salvation. Hallelujah. But there was many that rose that day and they walked the earth. You know, some people say, well, you know, the Bible is just, just too hard to believe. How can I believe that there was people that rose from the grave and walked the earth that day. <laughs> well, the Bible tells me I believe it. Well, you got demonic spirits walking the earth right today. If that ain't so far stretch, how come we cannot believe the word of God? Because, see, that's where the carnal mind is. It can't comprehend the things of God. That's the reason we pray, Lord, take my mind and give me the mind of Christ. Because without it, you cannot understand the Word of God. If you read this Word in a carnal mind, you're going to get a carnal mind interpretation. The Bible says that men twist the Scriptures to what? Their own damnation. You cannot get a true revelation unless it's done by the Spirit through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is what leads and guides us into all truth. <coughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty soon. But it said, then, then will I hear. Then I will hear from heaven. And then what did it say? What did it say then? Then he will hear from heaven. Amen. And do what? Heal our land. He's talking to any nation right here where his people abide. All the Christians over in all these other nations that are suffering and being beheaded and all this. If they would wake up, turn their hearts and lives to Christ. God could bring down their enemy so quickly. We've well, got to wake up, children of God. I'm praying that God will deliver us out of the hand of our enemies. If we have enemies up in the White House, I'm telling you, that's working every day. To destroy us. And I'm telling you. Without, without the intervention of God. They are doing a good job of it. How we have known a miracle. Will be no more. This world. This America could change. By the time we get up in the morning. But I tell you what. Through God and through prayer. If his church would just turn back to him, what was wrong years ago is still wrong. God don't change, it's man that changes. And you got this Jezebel church that's trying to pull people in with entertainment and all this mess. And you got even some of God's churches trying to do this mess. It's this
pleasing. The Lord showed me in a vision. Church houses with their tops off. And he took me with him and I looked over in and I saw nothing but vipers crawling around. Slithering all over the, the floor and going up the sides of the walls. He said, this is how many have become before me as vipers. I remember a dream I had back in 2005. And in this dream, I saw this large, I mean she was huge. Probably a thousand pounds or more. I mean she was just huge and she was very dark skinned. Laying on an operating table, a delivery table. She was trying to have birth but she couldn't have it naturally. And she was covered with white blotches all over her, over her mouth, all over her skin. And then I saw these surgeons standing on each side of her and they slid her open by cesarean birth to take out this child. And when they cut her open and they took this child out, this child was covered with the same blotches, but yet his has erupted into pulse. It had become active. That means the deception was even more so done in him than what was done in her. What she was birthing forth was more evil than what she was. And then I looked and beheld as they held him up. And then out of her belly crawled vipers and scorpions. All kind of evil manner come up out of her belly. She was representing the Jezebel church. Her skin color being dark, it was meaning that it was a thing of darkness. Her size was representing that it was a large move throughout the earth. Not just in one nation, but all nations. And the seed that she is birthing forth is this section. And it's even stronger than what she is putting forth. She has been birthing this evil seed. I tell you, there's a seed of God and there's a seed of the devil. You say, well, I don't believe that. People need to start reading their Bibles. Who sows the tares? The wicked one. Even in Jesus' own parable, he said what? They're the children of the wicked one. They're not his children. They're children of the wicked one. I'm telling you, children of God, we've got to understand where we're at in God. We've got to understand where we are in the Word. We are in an area, a time and a season of God's Word that many things are coming to pass. Many prophecies from times of old to what's going forth right today. You know, I had a person tell me one time that after Jesus there was no more prophets. What Bible are they reading? The book of Acts is full of prophets. That was after Jesus. Come and die. It was a prophet that come up to Paul and told him he was going to be bound. And give his life for the Lord if he went on. To the place that he was going. He said not only am I ready to be bound but to give my life for the Lord. Paul knew what was fixing to take place. The Lord had already showed him. We are children of light, not children of darkness. He said he would let nothing come upon us unaware. Unless he done what? Revealed it to the prophets first that they can warn you. That's whether they're men or women. A man is a prophet, a woman is a prophetess. And God has that ministry today just as well as he always has. There is the fivefold ministry. The apostles. With an S, multiple. Prophets, not one prophet. Prophets. And he didn't say that he would reveal to the prophet. He said that unless he would reveal to the prophets. First. See, people want to read into the word what they want to read into it. But I'm telling you, his word will stand forever. From everlasting to everlasting. And I'm going to stand with the word of God. I don't care who you are. I'm going to stand with the word. You said, Sister Brenda, 
Because I know this is what's going to help me. It's what's going to save me. Not man's ideas. It's the traditions and doctrines of men that has got the church in the place that it is. Why? Because they got carnal interpretations from the word. I'm telling you, children of God, we got to get back to God. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, he didn't say the sinner. He didn't say the transgressor. But a transgressor is them that what? Picked up the things they once laid down. They make their own selves a transgressor. So his people that are walking in wickedness, they are a transgressor. He didn't say the sinner and the wicked, but he said, my people, my people. We've got many today that says, who, me? What do you mean? I'm righteous. That right there shows me it's a proud spirit. Mm -hmm. Anybody that walks in a proud spirit, what's going to be brought low? Mm -hmm. Them that are willing to humble, they'll be exalted in due season. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to James. Chapter 4. I'm fixing to wrap this up. But I'm telling you, if you'll listen today and let this word take a hold of you, it will help you. It will help you. And we just got to understand what God is trying to tell us. I want to start at verse 6. <clears throat> But he giveth more grace, <clears throat> wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. I'll give you a minute to find it. But God resisteth the proud. So if you have a proud spirit, God resists you. I don't care how much you get in there and pray. He's not hearing your prayer. He's resisting you. Because you've got a proud spirit. But if we repent unto godly sorrow, mm -hmm. say, Lord, forgive me. I've been proud and boastful and I shouldn't have been. Help me, Lord. Wash me, cleanse. <coughs> Just like David. It was a man after God's own heart. But he failed. But see, his heart kept him toward God. And when he failed, he would repent. Hallelujah. Even when he couldn't see it, God would eventually open it up to him and then he would fall on his face. We have to be willing to fall on our face, children of God. But it goes on and it says, but giveth grace unto the humble. We've got to humble. If we don't humble, my goodness. If we're stiff-necked, hard-hearted at heart, we will walk right into the destruction, I'm telling you. I don't care who we are. We gotta wake up. We gotta humble before him. It says, submit yourselves. You got many people that live like the devil and think that they're making the devil leave. <laughs> they're no more submitting themselves than a man in the moon. Oh, I got power of the devil. I'll tell him to go, and then they'll go out and commit all kinds of sin. Devil's laughing at you. You ain't sick in him nowhere. I don't care how much word you use against him because he'll, it only works if you're living it. If you're not living it, he's laughing at you. But if you're living this word of God by what? Submitting yourselves therefore to God. Then resist the devil and he will flee from you. And a preacher get mad at me. Because he was telling people, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I said, well, there's one thing you're forgetting. They've got to submit themselves first. Got mad at me. <laughs> you let me deal with this the way I feel like I need to deal with it. I said, you need to deal with it by the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, my goodness, what's wrong with people? They're listening to flesh. And their life is bearing forth fruit that's not righteous. The Bible says a righteous tree cannot bear forth evil fruit. You know why? Because the Spirit of God's living in you, telling you not to do it, and you're listening. 
But if your tree's bearing forth evil fruit, you better check yourself. You're not a righteous tree. Amen. And you better get yourself righteous in God. Not your own righteousness, but His. He, then what He said, draw nigh to God. And He will draw nigh to us. See, God wants you to make that first step. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands. How do you cleanse your hands? By being a doer of the word. Now this is spiritually he's talking about. Your spiritual hands. Because many are standing with blood on their hands. Why? Because they won't be obedient to their call. Why? Because they won't live righteous before God. And they're leading other men to follow them into their unrighteousness. I, the Lord showed me a vision one year, and I saw preachers standing before the judgment seat prone with their hands out like this on each side. And it was a river of blood pouring from their hands because of the deception that they led people in. The Bible says the blind will lead the blind, and they'll what? both fall in the ditch. Amen. It makes a difference whether you have truth or not. <laughs> Truth is the only thing that can save you and make you free. And that's Jesus. He said, I am the truth. I am the way and I am the life to live. Amen. That's what he means by truth. Amen. It's being Christ-like. To live in him. Lord, help us to live in you, Father. <laughs> help us, dear Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Father. Holy Jesus, holy Jesus, holy Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to finish this up. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. If a man is double-minded, God is not going to move for that person. That's the reason we got to seek him. we got to find out his will. Don't be swift to move. we got so many that are just, get a thought in their head, and they'll just jump up and run. I have some that get impatient with me because I'm slow to move. But God has taught me things since he restored me. You don't run to be running. More harm is done by that. People running in flesh. Look at the damage that's been done to the church because of flesh. Men running to be running to make names for themselves. Trying to make a ministry. I ain't trying to make no ministry. Lord told me not to even name the ministry after myself because it ain't me. It ain't you. It's Jesus and him alone. <laughs> I don't lift myself up to people. I lift up Jesus Christ. His banner is what I lift up everywhere I go. I preach Jesus and him crucified. Amen. That is the one that saves and delivers us. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of him here. I'm not ashamed of him out on the streets. I'm not ashamed of him to even go in the White House if they'd let me. To carry them the word. And give them a word of righteousness. Hallelujah. You know, back in the times of old, it was prophets that worked with kings to help them. We need one today. We sure don't need no Rick Warren or Stephen Warren or whatever his name is that Obama has chose. That right there or to show you that he's full of wickedness. The devil's only going to choose his own. And now he's going to run off and try to unite with the Pope that's coming to our country. Another part of the devil? You know, people better wake up. 
God's not trying to unite these denominations because they're not of Him. He's not of division. The only one He's trying to unite is His people. His people are a church without walls. Without denominations. People ask me many times, Sister Brenda, you're one of this, aren't you? I said, no. Well, you're Trinity then. I said, no. Then what are you? I said, don't go by towels. I said, I believe in the revelation of Jesus Christ. But do you believe there's one God or, or many gods or three gods? I said, there ain't but one God. And the devil even knows that and he trembles. Well, what faith of you? I said, I'm only of one faith. The Bible tells me there's one faith. One Lord and one baptism. I'm not of many faiths. I'm only of one faith, and that's Jesus Christ. Him alone. Well, you're one of them Jesus freaks then, aren't you? No. <laughs> you might think I'm a freak or something, but I'm telling you, I am a child of God. That is what I am. I'm a child of God, a servant of His, and a servant to His people. Amen. But you got preachers out there that don't want to be a servant to nobody. They're trying to be big this and big that. Lord, you just make me like you, Jesus. That's what I want. Clothe me in your righteousness, Father. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. See, let the Spirit of God afflict you. <coughs> David said, if it hadn't have been for my affliction, <laughs> I would not have repented. But because the Lord afflicted me sore, <laughs> I repented. And David even told the Lord, he said, Lord, do not chastise me in your heart displeasure, lest you consume me. We are his children. And thank goodness he does chastise us. But Lord, just don't do it in your hot displeasure. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for caring enough for me that you do correct me. It goes on, it says, Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Was he talking about you walking around just being the, in the mully grubs? No, that ain't what he's talking about. He's talking about having a true burden for souls. But people, they ain't worried about a burden for souls. All they're worried about is jesting and joking and laughing and carrying on. I'm not saying it's wrong to laugh. I laugh. There's great joy in laughter. The Lord's joy is, is in my heart. <laughs> There's many times I laugh. Even carrying a heavy burden, I laugh. Hallelujah. I had one person tell me on it, Sister Brenda, you're just smiling all the time. I said, why? I, I said, I smile because the Lord is so gracious to me. I love him so much. So get the frown off your face and smile. <laughs> Let people know the joy of the Lord that's in your heart. Even if you're carrying one of the heaviest burdens that you could ever carry. You take that to God in prayer. And he'll hear and he'll move. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. If you don't humble, there won't be no lifting up. And don't humble to be lifted. Humble because you want to humble before the Lord. I don't humble to him because I want to be lifted up. Humble because I love him and I want to please him. I don't live my life by others. I live my life to please my Lord. I've had some people say, well, so-and-so does this. So-and-so does that. I can't help what so-and-so does. So-and-so is going to have the answer between them and God. I'm the one that's going to have to answer for what I do. The Bible says every... Out of word we speak, we're going to be judged for it unless it's under the blood. You know, the Bible covers everything. He, co he covers cursing. There's some people that say they're saved and believe it's not wrong to curse. 
The Bible says it plainly, curse sin. <laughs> if they want me to get scriptures for them, I'll get scriptures for them. Cursing is wrong. Idle words are wrong. We need to get everything under the blood. Let him cleanse us. The Bible tells us, and it puts the responsibility on our shoulders. Cleanse yourselves. From what? All filthiness of what? The flesh and the spirit. Not only do we got to clean up the spirit in our life, we got to clean up the flesh. And if the holiness of God is in you, it's going to show in your actions, in covering up your flesh, it's going to show. Because when the, when the Lord lives in us, he tells us not to do such and such. Listen to him. Lay it down. There's nothing in this world that I count higher than my Lord. Well, I don't think the Lord wants us to give it up. Well, walk on in deception if you want to. I can't make people do anything. All I can do is bring them the word. It's up to them and God whether they get it straight or not. If they continue on to lie to their children about Santa Claus and Easter, then it's them and God. My hands are clean. My hands will stand there on judgment day clean. Lord, I didn't know. You don't remember my servant so-and-so told you it was wrong? But you did it anyway. I'm telling you, children of God, we cannot lull ourselves asleep in wickedness. Anything that ain't like God is wicked. One of the seven sins that he hated was lying. And if you've lied, you better get it under the blood. It's time to walk righteously in God. But don't listen to me, people don't want to. This is going out over the air. I'm talking to us here and everybody that's going to listen to this over the internet. If you want to continue in lies, you go. But you can't say a servant of God did not tell you to do different on judgment day. You better teach your children the ways of God. You better get them out of all this paganism stuff. You better get your family out of it, yourself out of it. Because if you don't, you're fixing to feel the wrath of God upon you, I'm telling you. Only ones that are not appointed under wrath is them that are walking in obedience to God. If you're not walking in obedience to God, then yes, you're appointed to wrath. The wicked, the sinner, and the transgressor are appointed unto wrath. I had some say, well, you know, we're not going to be here in tribulation. Well, then you should have already been gone, I'm telling you. Look around, you're still here. God is no respecter of persons. If he's only reserving the church of America, that they don't have to face anything. But yet he lets his church in China, hallelujah, all in the eastern nations, and all these other nations that are against God, hallelujah, he lets them be beheaded and suffer tribulation. You're going to suffer tribulation too. He's no respecter of persons. God ain't never took his bride out of anything. He's tucked her through. And we'll go through in the ark of safety. Who, what is the ark of safety? It's Jesus Christ. you got to get hid in him. How can you get hid in him? By getting before him and making sure that you're walking in a pure heart. Because if that heart ain't pure, you're not going to see him. I don't care how long your dress is. It can touch the floor. I don't care how long your sleeves are. It can come down in here. Even cover up most of your hands. You can have hair flowing down to the floor. And the holy men, whatever they do, they can do all that outward holiness standard. It will not save them from anything. If that's all they're relying on, it will not. That is works of the flesh. And it will not save you. Only thing that saves us is the real, true righteousness of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb. 
He said, who are my disciples? Won't you listen to this? My disciples are them that continue in my word. If you don't continue in the word and you live like you want to, you're not his disciple. Jesus' word is going to stand forever, I'm telling you. Does it mean that you can st you stay that way? No. If you humble yourself, repent, and get right with God, get it covered under the blood, then and continue on in His Word, then you're His disciple. I want to be a disciple indeed, don't you? What does it mean? That means I'm walking in action. The Bible tells me if I'm a doer of the Word, I mean if I'm a hearer of the Word only and not a doer, I deceive my own self. Nobody else is deceiving, but I deceive my own self. So we got to straighten up, children of God. I know this wasn't a jump up and down message, but we need it. I'm telling you, if we get right with God, we'll have plenty of jump up and down messages. <laughs> we'll have God moving in. Hallelujah, in a powerful way. I'm ready for it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And many times we do, we feel the joy of the Lord just moving all in, but today the Lord is wanting to tell us to straighten up. He's wanting us to wake up. Amen. I want to wake up. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, Lord, you know, I, I, I'm i righteous this, I'm righteous that. Uh -uh. Lord says, I need to repent. I'm going to repent. I'm going to be on my face repenting. Mm -hmm. I don't care how good I think I am. I'm going to be repenting. Because he knows my heart greater than I do. Every person under my voice. You better start waking up and humbling yourself unto God. I don't care if you warm up pew every week, every time the door opens. If your heart is not pure before God, if you're not getting in that closet of prayer and letting Him examine your heart, hallelujah, with you and reveal it unto you, you're walking in deception. And you're going to split hell wide open. You better wake up, children of God. Yes, we are sealed by the Holy Ghost. But it's up to us whether we walk in the Holy Ghost or not. And we're sealed as long as we walk in Him. But you go back out and sin and stuff, you're His child, yes. He won't, he'll go come after you, yeah. But while you're out there uncovered, you're talking about all kinds of things that'll come on you. I know I've been there. And by the mercies of God, he kept me through many things. I had a man one night tell me he was going to cut me in little bitty pieces. And put me with the others that he had already killed. And I looked, it, it, it had to be God. It had to be an angel of the Lord been there right there with me. I felt no fear whatsoever. I stared at him just, just right on I said, you think you are, huh? It's shucking. Because see, people like that, they thrive on fear. That's what causes them to kill. Because I could not satisfy that fear that he lusted after. Now, if I had a fear, he probably would have killed me. He cut me up in little bit pieces. But see, God kept me even when I was out wandering around. He kept me. I believe there was an angel right there that kept me from fearing. And I knew in my heart that I needed to get out of that situation and not delay. And I did. And the Lord somehow dropped the <coughs> wisdom in my heart how to get out of it. And then the, later on I reported him. And where he lives, there was women found on the side of the road dead. So if he was truly guilty of what he said, I hope they got him. <laughs> I hope they got him. Hallelujah. I tell you what, God is good. Devil's been trying to kill me all my life. But God has not let him take my life yet. Hallelujah. And he won't. I lay my life down. Jesus said, you don't take my life. I lay it down. Mm -hmm. We have that right as well. We can either lay our life down or we can take it up. It's up to us. Mm -hmm. I choose to lay my life down. 
My life proves that. See, your ministry is approved through your actions. Actions speak louder than words. I can tell you I love you all day, but I don't ever put any action behind it. Then it's just words. That's all it is. They're empty words. But I put action behind it. Not only am I there to help you whenever you need it, I am there continually standing in the gap for you and your families. Continually. Every day. Every day I'm standing right there between the devil and y'all. And I tell you what, it's a blessed thing to have a leader, a pastor, that'll stand between you and the devil through Jesus Christ. That's what a true shepherd does. You know, David, when he was that little old boy out there keeping those sheep, you know, I read up on what a shepherd does. They said at night, if they're still out there, they find a cupboard where there's hills on all sides and there's only one way in. And they'll sleep right there in that doorway. If anything gets to those sheep, it's got to come through that doorway, through them. And it ain't happening if it's a true shepherd. He'll give his life for the sheep. David was a young boy, but yet when a lion tried to get to those sheep, what? The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he ran that lion to pieces. When a bear tried to get to his sheep, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. And he ripped those jaws in two. <laughs> You say, well, now it sounds like a book of fantasy again. Let me tell you. If you walk with God, my goodness, you're talking about the miracles that you will see. And he'll call you to be a person of faith. If you'll just learn to walk in him. I love you. I praise God. I love him. Take this word. Hide it in your heart. That you might not sin against him. That's what David said. Lord, I hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Take his word. Believe his word. Stand in his word. And let him talk to you. When you go in prayer, open your heart to him. Some people say, Sister Brenda, how do you pray? You go in there and talk to him like you would your best friend. When you go with your troubles to your best friends, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? Well, go in there and tell the Lord. Say, Lord, what am I going to do? Look at the mess I've got myself in, Lord. My goodness, what am I going to do? Lord, I repent of it. Forgive me. Cover me in your blood. Give me wisdom, Lord, how to walk and how to do. And the Lord will do just that. But if you try to take care of it in your own self, you'll just mess up even more. Oh, I love the Lord. He's so precious. Tim, you can cut that off. I want us to raise our hands. Hallelujah.